Hi everyone, Nasia Davos here. Welcome to this video. So in this video, let's talk about one of the key principles from the cognitive behavioral quitting method, the CBQ method, which is that smoking is 80% a mental addiction and 20% a physical addiction. So the smoking addiction, the nicotine addiction in any form and frequency is 80% mental and 20% physical. Now, what does this mean? Most of us, we think that smoking is a strong physical addiction that's even uh, harder to quit than heroin and all those things we hear. But in nicotine as a substance, it's a weak substance. How do you know? Because nicotine has a short half-life. The half-life is the amount of time that it takes for half of the amount of substance to leave your body. So with nicotine, half of the amount of nicotine leaves your body in about three hours, starts at 45 minutes and leaves in three hours. And the remaining half leaves over the next three to five days if you stop using nicotine. So nicotine does not have a strong hold over you. It's not strong physically. So with that in mind, what makes smoking so addictive? What makes you feel like smoking is your friend and the only thing that gets you through hard times and something you need or you enjoy and you need it for your routine? And what makes you go back to smoking five, 10, 300,000 days after you are done with nicotine and the nicotine has left your body? Well, the real culprit is the mental addiction. And that's why we say that smoking is mostly a mental addiction. And of course, the 80%, 20%, these percentages are not um, really quantifiable how much mental and how much physical it is, but it goes out to show that smoking is mostly a mental addiction. So nicotine is a physical substance. It affects your body, but above all, it affects your mind, your behavior, your mental state. Nicotine hijacks the brain because it releases dopamine and it hijacks the reward circuit, the reward system of the brain and makes the brain believing, makes the brain believe that nicotine is something that it needs. So our brain, our, our brain was evolved through the eons to release dopamine in order to reward us and motivate us to do things that ensure the survival of our species, like reproducing, eating, learning things, figuring things out. So, Nicotine hijacks the brain and makes it believe that smoking, nicotine, is also a behavior worth repeating. It is something that you need to survive. But of course, this is just the reptilian part of your brain, and it's not the actual truth. The intellectual part of your brain is the one you need to call upon in order to overcome this addiction. So the physical addiction is simply the addiction to the substance nicotine. The mental addiction is how much you believe you enjoy and need smoking, how much you, um, how much of a friend you feel it is and how ingrained it is in your life, how much part of your life it is. There is this mental and behavioral component to the smoking addiction. And this happens because throughout the years, as you were smoking and your brain was releasing dopamine, you were doing at the same time certain things and activities, or you were experiencing certain emotions or certain situations. So with time, your brain learned to associate the dopamine release with whatever it is you were doing and feeling. So now, after years of smoking, your brain thinks that all these activities have to be paired with smoking in order to be complete. For example, if throughout the years you have been uh, smoking while drinking your coffee, then you have taught your brain to expect a cigarette, a dopamine release, when you have your coffee. Or if you usually smoke when you are stressed, now you have taught your brain that you have to smoke when you feel stressed, otherwise you cannot relax. And that's how smoking makes us feel that it's an inseparable part of our lives and that life is not worth living without a nicotine friend and that life will be worse without it. This is all part of the addiction. There is nothing inside the cigarettes that adds value to your life, that improves your well-being, that helps you cope with stuff. This is just how you have conditioned, how you have taught your brain to respond to certain situations. We have taught ourselves, we have taught ourselves that the first response to any emotion is a cigarette. 
That's it. But of course, that's not the case. This is just what we have learned to do. It's not what is true. And whatever the brain learns, it can unlearn it. You were born a non-smoker. That is your natural state. This is your birthright. You were not born. Your body was not designed to run on nicotine. Your body and your mind, they have the inner knowing. They know how to live and thrive without nicotine. So you can go back into being a non-smoker. Your body and your mind will support you. You just have to take the step and go through the adjustment process. Everything happens through an adjustment process. When you became a smoker, you went through certain stages. You first chose to try cigarettes, then you changed your mind. You changed your mindset about what cigarettes are and that you can do them anytime. Then slowly you started making them part of your daily life. You went from smoking on social occasions to smoking habitually on a daily basis. And since then, you've been conditioning your mind and body to get used to smoking and to help you cope in certain situations. Like I said, it's the the first response to anything. Whatever happens, the first thought is a cigarette. Not because of the cigarette itself. There's nothing in it. But it's because of how we have trained ourselves to behave. So these are the stages you went through to become a smoker. And you have to go through the same four stages to break free from the addiction. And these are the four stages of the CBIC method. You first choose to quit. Then you change your mindset. You change how you feel about smoking, your relationship with cigarettes. Then you change your smoking pattern. You break the habitual aspect of smoking by weakening your triggers, by changing your craving thoughts, changing your state, how you feel around and while smoking. And then you smoke your last cigarette. And after that, the last stage is that you condition your smoke-free life. You go through the adjustment period. So which is not changing into someone else. It's going back to being a non-smoker, going back to your real self, to your authentic self. So that's the physical and the mental addiction. Nicotine is really not a strong physical addiction because it leaves your body quickly. It does not just stay there forever. And also, and because it leaves your body quickly, that's why there are 20 cigarettes in a pack. It just needs to be replenished frequently so you can remain addicted. It's not a drug that will sustain you. And of course, this is very, very profitable for some people. So it's not strong. And you know that because you go through the night, you sleep through the night, and you, your physical cravings don't wake you up. If your physical addiction was so strong, then you would wake up in the middle of the night just to smoke. Now, I am not saying that it's not, this is not the same with waking up to drink a glass of water and remembering to smoke a cigarette. Because again, this is your mind reminded you. But your physical, the urge to smoke does not wake you up. So it's not a strong addiction physically. The physical cravings are barely noticeable. And if you do notice them, it's just an uncomfortable, a twitch a hunger-like feeling in your stomach. And I have another video where I talk about the four hungers of the nicotine withdrawal. One of them is nicotine, emotional hunger, nutritional, and thirst. So I have another video about that. So it's not a strong physical addiction. But first thing in the morning, what do you do? You have to smoke a cigarette. Why? Because your mind is awake and your mind reminds you to smoke when you talk on the phone, when you feel stressed, when you feel um, a bit empty, when you sit with your thoughts. It's the first response in everything and there is always a reason to smoke the next cigarette. But in reality, there is nothing underneath this reasoning. There is no real reason apart from the fact that we just feel uncomfortable to make that change. But like most things, this, this change is liberating and it's returning back to your real self. So that is the principles of the CBQ method. Uh, Smoking is 80% a mental addiction, 20% physical. If you want to learn more about the CBQ method, check the links below this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. If you want to quit smoking in a way that's easy, natural and permanent, then you need to check out the CBQ method. The cognitive behavioral quitting method is based on psychology and it has helped millions quit smoking and vaping in just four steps, in just four stages. The four stages of the CBQ method reprogram your brain and remove your desire to smoke so you can quit easily and naturally even if you've tried everything but nothing has worked for you, and even if you've been smoking all your life and smoking is all you know. 
To learn more about the CBQ method and see how it can help you quit smoking for good, go to startcbq.com. This page is for you if you're trying to quit smoking and you want to see how this step-by-step -step process works, or if you've recently quit but you're struggling. This page will show you how the CBQ can help you and how to get started for free. So go to startcbq.com to learn more and I'll see you there.